Advanced and new capabilities in Windows PowerShell version 2.0. Hi, I'm Don Jones, and I'm going to be your guide to all of the exciting, powerful new stuff in version 2 of Windows PowerShell. If you've used PowerShell version 1 and are already familiar with it, that's great, because this is really going to build on your existing skills. Everything you knew in version 1 still applies in version 2. Now, if you've never used version 1, well, you might want to start off with something more fundamental to really get used to the shell, although in nugget number 2, we're going to have a PowerShell version 2 overview that'll kind of be a short little crash course to using the shell. Uh, after that, in nugget number 3, we're going to take a look at a new option in Windows PowerShell 2 called the PowerShell ISE, or Integrated Scripting Environment. We'll also take a brief look at some other commercial and free integrated scripting environments that provide alternatives to what comes with PowerShell. In nugget number four, well, security is always something good to talk about. So we'll review PowerShell security, talk about its execution policy, and how it's designed to help prevent scripts from being used maliciously in your environment. Nugget number five is where we get to one of the most exciting new features in PowerShell version two, remoting. We'll talk about configuring remoting and managing remote sessions. We'll talk about some of the underlying technologies like WinRM and WSMAN and how those work. In the nugget number six, we'll move on to actually using that remoting, both for one-to-one -one or remote shell sessions, as well as fan out or one-to-many remoting, where you can actually manage multiple computers simultaneously in parallel. Nugget number seven will be a related thing, background jobs. A lot of times when you're using remoting, you're going to be using it in conjunction with these background jobs, and so we're going to talk about how to really use and manage those. Nugget eight will move on to the advanced and vastly improved debugging features in PowerShell version two. Uh, we kind of went from this really primitive debugging environment in version one to this full-fledged, powerful debugging environment in version two, and I definitely want to show you how you can use it to make debugging faster and easier. Um, related to that is error handling. Uh, not so much bugs, but being able to uh, accept and deal with errors that happen in a script while it's running. Errors you can anticipate, like a computer not being online when you expected it to be, or, or something like that. Also, a ton of improvements there in version 2, and we'll be talking about those. Now, if you ever have a need to write a script that can be easily translated into different languages, maybe to share with colleagues in offices in a different country, then you're really going to appreciate the data language and internationalization features that have been added to PowerShell version 2. Now, another one of the coolest new sets of features are going to come up in nugget number 11, where we talk about the improvements to Windows management instrumentation and the vast improvements to Active Directory management. We'll talk a little bit about Active Directory Services Interface, or ADSI in there, but we'll also talk about the new AD commandlets that were first introduced with Windows 7 and Windows Server 2008 R2. And nugget number 12 is where we're kind of getting into a little bit of scripting here, and we'll talk about advanced functions. I'm actually going to start you with a basic function and then walk you through all the different types of functions PowerShell supports, including this new type of function called an advanced function, where you can actually write your own scripts or your own commandlets entirely in script form, rather than having to break out Visual Studio. Nugget number 13 will continue with the idea of scripting and modularization, and I'll introduce you to modules. Uh, it's an easier way to share scripts. We'll talk about binary modules, which Microsoft is actually using to distribute uh, PowerShell snap-ins now, as well as the script modules that you can create on your own and give you some ideas and best practices for module management. Nugget number 14 is where I'll talk about some of the new built-in variables and operators in Windows PowerShell. Um, things you might not use every single day, but they're sure handy to know about when the, the particular need comes up. Nugget 15 will, is where we'll cover support for some new transactional operations. Now, this only applies if you're using Windows Vista or a later version of Windows, which, both, which all support uh, a transactional file system and a transactional registry. So we'll look at how those work and how PowerShell supports those and how you can put them to use in some practical situations. Nugget 16 is where we'll talk about responding to events. Now, an event is something that sort of happens in the background on Windows. You know, you move your mouse over a button and an event occurs. You click a button and an event occurs. But also lower level things. You create a new file and an event occurs. And we'll look at how PowerShell can register to receive those events and allow you to run commands in response to those events. 
Megat 17 is where we'll look at some improvements in key commandlets. Um, lots of, of additional remoting capabilities, a lot of computer name parameters, um, big improvements to things like select string and get member to help you really kind of grasp easily the differences between version 1 and version 2 and realize that there's new functionality there that you can take advantage of. Finally, nugget number 18 is where we'll cover some key new commandlets, ones that are brand new to PowerShell version 2. Now, there's actually well over two or three hundred new commandlets that have been added to PowerShell version 2. There's a lot. But we're going to look at some of the really important ones, the ones that you're going to get the most use out of. And we're going to look at some that kind of serve as templates for a bunch. So we'll look at one commandlet that's representative of a couple dozen. So by learning to use that one, you're pretty much automatically learning to use that couple dozen too. So I'm really excited to get started. I think you're going to really enjoy some of the great new stuff in PowerShell version 2. So let's just jump right in. Mm -hmm. 